Now that we went through SAMSA's terminology, we are ready to look at how SAMSA works under the hood. Internally, SAMSA consumes messages from one or more input streams, propagates them and runs them through your application logic, and emits your results to an output stream or a database. Recall that your application logic can be specified using the low-level API that offers a simple process callback on what to do with an incoming message, or the high-level API that allows you to express your computation as a series of functions, or SAMSA SQL that allows you to express your application logic in SQL. Regardless of whichever API you choose, SAMSA logically expresses your computation as a logical DAG of operators with the output of one feeding into the other. To scale processing, your application is broken down into smaller units of logical parallelism called as tasks. Each task is assigned to process one or more partitions in your input stream. In this example, task 0 processes partition 0, task 1 processes partition 1, and so on. Each task can then instantiate the DAG based on the partitions that are assigned to it. While partitions and tasks are the logical units of parallelism, they don't necessarily correspond to any particular physical resources. In SAMSA, the unit of physical parallelism is what we call as a container. You can think of each container as a Unix process which runs and executes one or more tasks. While the number of tasks is fixed and determined automatically from the number of partitions in the input stream, the number of containers is specified at runtime and can be changed depending on the parallelism that you need. For example, you could currently have two containers running on these two hosts, and you could decide to add an extra container for more parallelism. Once a new container is added, the tasks get evenly distributed across all containers. Each SAMSA application also includes a job coordinator that manages the execution of the containers. The coordinator is responsible for assigning the tasks across containers. It also monitors the individual containers by means of heartbeats. And in case if a particular container fails, the coordinator can take actions like restarting that container or redistributing its tasks across the remaining containers. The coordinator itself is pluggable, enabling SAMSA to support multiple deployment options. You can use SAMSA as a lightweight embedded library that integrates with a larger application. This mode uses Zookeeper for coordination. Alternately, you can deploy and run SAMSA as a managed framework using a cluster manager like Apache Yarn. It's worth noting that SAMSA is the only system that offers first-class support for both these deployment options. While some systems like Flink only support the framework model for stream processing, others like Kafka Streams only support the standalone model. Now that we have seen how SAMSA runs your program, we are ready to take a look at how SAMSA handles state. Each task includes a high-performance state store to enable you to build stateful stream processing applications. The state store associated with each task is isolated and only stores data corresponding to the partitions processed by that task. This is important. When you scale out your job by giving it more computational resources, SAMSA can transparently migrate its tasks from one machine to the other without affecting the overall application. While having a durable local state store offers excellent performance, failures are inevitable and we should still guarantee fault tolerance in the presence of failures. For this purpose, SAMSA replicates every write to the store into a separate stream which we call as a change log for the store. During failures, this allows you to later recover the data in the store by reading the contents of the change log from the beginning. A log compacted Kafka topic is typically used as a change log because Kafka automatically retains the most recent value for each key. Each store also includes an in-memory cache in front of it for better performance. We just saw how you get fault tolerance of state using a change log. However, if your application has several terabytes of local state, then 
Bootstrapping it every time by reading the change log is expensive and can incur downtime. To recover quickly during failures, SAMHSA takes data locality into account when scheduling tasks on hosts. Consider the following setup with three tasks and two containers. And now let's say container one failed. This causes the heartbeat to expire and notifies the coordinator. The coordinator durably tracks which containers were running on which hosts and spawns the container on the same host that they were running previously on. This enables the container to reuse the local state snapshot available on that host instead of bootstrapping from the change log. We call this feature as host affinity because it tries to preserve the assignment of tasks to physical hosts. Thanks for watching this video. Let's recap what we covered in this section on SAMHSA's architecture. We discussed how SAMHSA runs your application by partitioning it into tasks and running it across multiple containers. And we also saw how SAMHSA deals with state. We saw how a change log can ensure fault tolerance of state and help recovery. And we saw how host affinity helps with faster recovery.